It's a pleasant good morning to you all. So on behalf of our Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, so I'm very much happy to welcome uh, uh, the today's speaker, Dr. S. Nagan, so who is professor in the Department of Civil Engineering, Tyagaraja College of Engineering, Madurai. So I'm very happy to welcome uh, Professor Dr. S. Nagan to this particular FDP program, and he's going to deliver on the moment distribution method for you uh, today. So I'm very happy to welcome you, sir. And uh, so uh, I'm very happy to introduce Dr. S. Nagan to the participants. Uh, so as I said, uh, he's uh, presently serving in uh, Tyagaraja College of Engineering as professor in the Department of Civil Engineering. And uh, he has uh, more than 30 years of experience in teaching. And regarding his educational background, uh, Dr. S. Nagan, he has completed his BE Civil Engineering from Tyagaraja College of Engineering, uh, uh, Madurai, in the year 1990. Then he has completed his ME Structural Engineering from the Agarajar College of Engineering, Madurai, year 1992. And uh, in both BE and ME, he secured first rank. And in undergraduate program, he has secured university first rank. He, he has completed his PhD in Civil Engineering from Madurai Kamaraj University, year 2006. And to his credit, he has completed the guidance of about 18 PhD scholars so far. And uh, he's presently guiding about uh, nine PhD scholars. And he has applied uh, uh, two patents uh, to his credit. He has completed several research projects uh, uh, from AACT and DSD. He has uh, published many papers in reputed international journals, national journals, and also international and national conferences uh, uh, so far. And he has published uh, uh, a book on engineering mechanics. So he has published uh, various revised editions. So engineering mechanics, statics, and dynamics uh, in the year 2004, and also engineering mechanics, statics, and dynamics for Anna University Common Syllabus in the year 2002. Engineering mechanics, statics, and dynamics in the year 2000, and also engineering mechanics, dynamics alone in the year 1998, and engineering mechanics, statics part alone in the year 1997. So from Tata Megra Hill Publishing Company Limited, New Delhi. And he has got uh, membership in various professional bodies. He has organized many uh, seminars, workshops, uh, conferences, etc. And also he has participated actively in various seminars, workshops, and conferences. And uh, he has shared his expertise with uh, many institutions by the way of uh, delivering special and invited lectures to various institutions on various uh, um, topics. And also he has uh, done uh, several consultancy works in the department uh, so along with the, uh, the faculty members of TCE, so he has done various consultancy works and uh, to his credit, he has secured many prizes, medals and honors. Uh, to mention a few, he has got fellowship in, in the International Society for Environmental Protection and uh, he has been awarded for uh, significant contributions made in the form of technical publications in the year 2000. And also he has got summer fellowship at, at IIT Madras in the year 2006 for two months. And also he has received Best Staff Advisor uh, Award uh, for the ISP Students Chapter. And uh, he has secured, uh, as I mentioned earlier, he has secured first rank in his BE Civil Engineering Program as well as in the ME Structural Engineering Program. In addition to that, he is serving as uh, uh, the Member Inspection Committee in AICTE and also Member in the Affiliation Committee uh, in Anna University. He is also uh, serving as Member of Board of Studies in various institutions. And also he is serving as Doctoral Committee Members for various scholars of NIT Trichy, Anna University, Gondigram Rural University, uh, Deemed University, and Karunya University, etc. And uh, he is the recognized supervisor of Anna University, and through that, he has guided many PhD scholars so far. So, we have an eminent expert today with us to share his knowledge on moment distribution method. So, once again, on behalf of all the participants present here, I welcome Dr. S. Nagan, sir, to this particular FTP program. Now, I'm handing over the session to Dr. S. Nagan. Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Uh, really, thank you very much for having given a uh, nice introduction. And uh, I should thank uh, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering uh, for uh, having uh, for having arranged uh, FTP, the anonymously sponsored FTP, structural analysis. Actually, it is the need of the hour, and we should thank the efforts made by the uh, head of the Department of Civil Engineering, uh, Dr. Kumudamara, and his team and her team. Okay. And really, I welcome all the participants uh, to share what we have studied already. Okay. Hope you are all uh, 
uh, faculty so we will be we have been teaching this subject now this ftp will help us to just to review what we have studied and what way the what is the methodology we need to follow so that we can make our students uh, easy to understand the concept okay? we should go by a, a step by step procedure in any uh, analysis subject or uh, mechanics of solids or sink of metals any problematic or any analytic subject we need to go in a systematic manner okay? this systematic approach has been taught to us by our professor muktu sir okay? he is an eminent uh, structural engineering professor at the agraja college of engineering and he has done several consultancy of nord structural engineering very famous buildings have been uh, designed by him so we follow his uh, methodology or method he which he devised okay, by his own actually okay. when books will be available but he has his own uh, methodology which uh, made us to uh, learn in an interesting and interesting manner okay. so let me share the thing which i have studied from him okay. so hope uh, you have already you already studied uh, the moment distribution method that you have been taught in this fdp moment distribution method okay let's yesterday uh, we have taught how to analyze beams okay am i right anyone kindly coordinate with me yes sir she has covered continuous beams okay so uh, my uh, my part is to cover uh, frames okay portal frames okay analysis of portal frames that we will be taking uh, the two sessions now okay so let me share the screen screen visible yes sir okay are you able to see this uh, slide with the uh, portal frame yes sir okay. can you tell me the load what is the load apply sir if it is possible to zoom it sir slightly mm, actually i made it in the full presentation mode ma'am so okay okay when they are using they can zoom i think when they are using mobile or something they okay can. okay yes sir is it possible participant please tell me it's a total kilonewton per meter huh? you can load your load as total kilonewton per meter yes yes so you are you able to zoom and see yes sir yes sir yes. Okay. okay so uh, let us start with analysis of uh, tell me let us start with analysis of portal frames okay so portal frames we have basically two types okay uh, frames with the sides way and frames without sides way someone wants to say something so we should uh, teach our students when will uh, frames have sides way and when frames will not have sides way okay say we should tell them uh, symmetrical frames okay symmetrical frames and symmetrically loaded frames okay symmetrical frames and symmetrically loaded frames will not have any side sway okay so before that we should tell them what is side sway okay side sway is the lateral displacement or lateral movement of a portal frame okay? lateral movement so this lateral movement may be due to uh, unsymmetrical nature of the portal frame so if the frame is unsymmetrical then there will be lateral displacement okay if the loading is unsymmetrical the loading is unsymmetrical frame will be subject to side sway and we have lateral load we have lateral load that will cause side sway okay lateral these are the conditions when we will be having uh, side sway okay so while dealing with side sway we'll uh, see such examples now let us all do this analysis of a portal frame without side sway first okay without side sway how to analyze okay so please make a note of this problem we'll go step by step so that you can also work so that you can follow the same uh, procedure if you are comfortable with this procedure okay? in in your class so we need to analyze a portal frame and the portal frame span is uh, 6 meters column height is 3 meters okay? and moment of inertia of columns i and moment of inertia of beams 2i okay so we need to teach them how we get this uh, i variation that also we need it's need to be taught to the students okay so 
uh, mostly columns will be of size 230 mm by uh, 300 mm. Okay, beam will be of size uh, 230 mm by 600 mm. So the beam depth depends on the span of the beam. Okay, we need to have at least one tenth of the span, the beam depth. Okay, so the beam depth will be 230 by 600 mm. And if you have the column sizes 230 by 300 mm, we can calculate the moment of inertia of each component. Okay, we can calculate the moment of inertia of each component. Say column, what will be high with the moment of inertia? Similarly, what is the moment of inertia for the beam? Okay, so that we should tell them because other, otherwise uh, they will not students will not understand why ie to why 1.5 etc okay so we should tell this clearly why this uh, variation of moment of inertia or how do we calculate this uh, variation moment of inertia okay say normally it is customary to keep the lowest value of moment of inertia as i okay smaller value as i and in terms of i we need to express the other moment of inertia okay in terms of i we need to express and Practically, we may, we may not get this rounded off i to 2y, etc. i will be the 2y, so it may be 1.875i or 1.25i. Likewise, you may get the uh, i variation practically. Okay, this we should also, uh, these subjects, this structural analysis, engineering, mechanics, statics, or mechanics of solids, we should, we should give them practical example also to make them feel why we are doing these things. Okay, otherwise, uh, it will be going mechanically. So, what, what is the purpose? Without any purpose, it will be. Uh, learn so we need to make them uh, why we uh, use these terms okay, anything should be uh, studied with proper understanding okay so that is the first thing am i audible yes sir okay so, okay. Okay. so let us see the first step okay step one okay. step one is stiffness and relative stiffness okay. stiffness and relative stiffness See, the analysis will be mostly similar to analysis of continuous beams only. However, we will see uh, uh, what will be the variation in uh, portal frames. Okay? So, stiffness and relative stiffness. So, we need to first write span. Okay? We have span AB, we have span BC, we have span CD. So, that should be written first AB, BC, CD. Then, length, right? L is length. So, what is the length? Length of AB is 3 meters. Length of BC is 6 meters and length of CD is 3 meters. Okay? That is L. Then moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. Moment of inertia of AB is I, BC is 2I, CD is I. Okay? Then stiffness. Okay? Stiffness. Stiffness we know we might already thought them that it is a ratio of moment of inertia to span. So I by L. In case if any one of the ends is uh, freely supported or hinged, then we need to use 3 fourth of I by L. Okay? 3 fourth I by L. So here, uh, if you take uh, AB, and A is fixed and B is continuous. Therefore, I need to use I by L. And if we take BC, B is continuous, C is continuous. Therefore, I by L. And if we take CD, C is continuous and D is fixed. Therefore, I by L for all the spans. Span AB, BC, and CD. So I divided by 3, 2I divided by 6, and I divided by 3. Okay. Then comes relative stiffness. So relative stiffness is we need to make this a yeah, number, whole number. Okay. So to make this as a whole number, what we can do is we can multiply by a common multiplier. We can choose a common multiplier. Say I can multiply by 3 by i. Okay. I can multiply this stiffness by multiply by 3 and divide by i. Okay. 3 by i. So if I multiply by 3 by i, what will happen? I'll get 1 here. Similarly, if I do 3 by i, what will happen? 3 by 6 is 2, 2, 2 will get inside for 1. And similarly, if I multiply 3 by i here, I will be getting 1. So, relative stiffness helps us to calculate the distribution factors easily. That's why we are having relative stiffness in as a mere number. So, in order to make this stiffness as a mere number, we are doing this operation. Okay? We are finding relative stiffness. So, you are, one can choose, this is optional, one can choose the common multiplier, even if you can choose 6 by i as a common multiplier. Okay, if I choose 6 by i, what will happen? Can anyone tell me? If I multiply by 6 by i, what will be getting uh, relative stiffness? Participants, anyone of you, please tell me, if I use common multiplier as 6 by i, how the Mirajan? Two, sir. Get two. Two. Very good. So, if I multiply by six by i, I'll be getting two here in the for span AB as well for BC as well for 
CD. So I'll be writing two, two, two. So thereby the ratio won't get modified. Okay? So it's optional to choose the common multiplier and make find the relative sickness. Okay. Then step two. Step two is calculating distribution factors. Okay? Step two is calculating distribution factors. So we know that distribution factor is the ratio of stiffness of the member considered. Okay? Stiffness of the member considered to the sum of stiffnesses of members meeting at a joint. Okay? To the sum of stiffnesses of members meeting at a joint. That is the uh, definition for distribution factor. Okay? And then distribution factor for AB. First we will start with AB. So distribution factor for AB is zero. Okay? Zero since A is fixed. So fixed and will won't have any distribution factor. Therefore, DF for AB is zero. We need to write since A is fixed. Okay? Now we'll calculate distribution factor for BA, okay? DFBA. So DFBA is equal to, as per the definition, stiffness of the member considered. So KBA, small k, small KBA, divided by sum of stiffnesses of members meeting at the joint. Okay? At joint B, the members meeting are BC and BA. Okay, the members meeting are BC and BA. So KBA plus KBC will be in the denominator. Okay? So this KBA can take from this relative stiffness value. So for BA it is 1, for BC it is 1. So 1 by 1 plus 1, it will be 0 0.5. Okay? 0 0.5 will be the distribution factor for BA. In a similar way, calculate for DFBC. So as per the definition, it is KBC divided by KBA plus KBC. So again, it will be 1 divided by 1 plus 1. It will be 0 0.5. Okay. So clear calculating distribution factors. Same way which you might have, you might have done for uh, beams also. Okay. Then distribution factor for CB. So distribution factor for CB. Can anyone of you tell me what how will you calculate distribution factor for CB? See, if there is the uh, interaction type, it will be good. And this type of interaction we should inculcate to our students also while taking class, okay? So that uh, we can know whether they are following or not. Can anyone tell me what is DFCB? How to calculate distribution factor for CB? More my question now. The distribution factor equal to. Uh, no. Stiffness of CB divided by sum of stiffness of uh, 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 BC and CD. Very good. Okay. So, uh, in, uh, in terms of formula, KCB divided by, someone told KCB. Okay, KCB divided by KCB plus KCB, KCB. by KCB, KCB. 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 Okay. So, that's what is written here. Okay. Is it clear? Are you able to read this? Readable or not? Not sir. Me. It's a zoom, sir. Zoom it, sir. Oh, zoom. Wait. Now? Okay, sir. Good, sir. Okay, sir. Are you able to see? Yes, sir. So, we have seen how to calculate the distribution factor for a DFPA. Now, DFBC is K, uh, DFCD is KCD by KCD plus KCB. Similarly, DFCB is KCB by KCB plus KCD. We are getting 0.5. And DFDC, distribution factor for DC is 0 since D is fixed. Okay. Now, step 3. Okay, what is step 1? Just let us recall. Step 1 is Stiffness and relative stiffness. Okay. Step two. 
distribution factor. Okay. Do you have any doubt in this too? You will clarify okay. doubts then and there. Okay. So sometimes we may involve uh, more than two members. Okay. In, uh, in structures, and practically, if you take multi storied frames, you will be involving more than uh, two members at a joint. So the same rule the uh, stiffness of the member considered divided by sum of thicknesses of the members meeting at a joint. There may be three members meeting at the joint. There may be two members meeting at a joint. There may be four members meeting at a joint. Okay? We need to uh, tell them how to calculate the distribution factor. Okay? Now, step three. Step three is fixed end moments. Yes, fixed end moments. So we need to treat every span. We need to treat every span as a fixed beam and find the fixed end moments. Okay, so this fixed end moment we know how to calculate for different types of loading. Okay? Different types of loading. Say if we have a uh, central point load, we have central point load, then left end minus WL by 8, and at right end we will be having plus WL by 8. If we have non central point load, at left end minus WAB squared by L squared, and right end plus WA squared B by L squared. If we have UDL, left end minus WL squared by 12 and right end plus WL squared by 12. So in the first class itself, we should give the, uh, our students what are the general formula for calculating fixed end moments due to various load type, okay? due to various load type. So the uh, various load type, commonly applied load types will be central point load, non-central point load, a uniformly distributed load, uniformly varying load, and applied moment, applied moment, and in some sometimes we may involve two point loads. Okay, two point loads. So we should teach them all these things how to calculate the fixed and moments in various situations. Okay. So for UDL minus WL squared by 12 at left hand and plus WL squared by 12 at the right hand. <clears throat> for uniformly varying load, for uniformly varying load of intensity, say W at the center and zero at the ends. Okay? Intensity W at the center and zero at the ends. The can anyone tell the fixed end moment formula for that case? <coughs> you remember? So that will be minus 5 by 96 WL squared on left side plus 5 by 96 WL squared on the right side. And we may have a uniformly varying load of intensity, say Q at the right end and 0 at the left end. Q at the right hand, 0 at the left hand. So in that case, at the left hand, it will be minus 2L squared by 30. And at right hand, it will be QL squared by 20. Okay. So where the intensity of the load is more, where the intensity of the load is more, we will be getting more fixed end moment. So QL squared by 20 will be more. And QL squared by 30 will be less. So why we are we need to teach them like this is the load may be anything. Say on the left side you may have uh, Q, right side you can have zero. So if the left load is on left side, intensity Q is on the left side, then the left side fixed end moment will be minus Q L squared by 30, sorry 20 because the uh, intensity is uh, more. And right side you'll be having Q L squared by 30. So this uh, difference we need to teach them. Similarly, if you have, have if you are given applied couple or moment M naught acting at a distance a from left hand and b from right hand okay so the left hand moment will be m naught b by l into 2 minus 3 b by l and the right hand fixed moment will be m naught a by l into 2 minus 3 a by l okay so in the first class itself we should give all the uh, fixer and moment formula for different loading conditions because this fixer and moment we will be using in the slope deflection method, we will be using in the moment distribution method, we will be using in the matrix uh, stiffness method, okay? matrix uh, force method, everywhere we will be using this fixer and moment. So, fixer and moment should be uh, told before uh, dealing with the step by step procedure. Okay? So, in our example, in our example, if you see, say we have the uh, UDL, okay, the uh, portal frame is subject to UDL. So, in case of UDL, minus WL squared by 12, left side, and right side plus WL squared by 12. And W is 12 kilometer per meter, L is 6. Therefore, minus 36 kilometer meter is M of BC, and M of CB is plus 36 kilonewton meter. 
okay how about the uh, spans a b and c d can you tell me what will be the fixed term moment in span a b and c d fixed term moments in a b and c d why no one is responding am i audible or not Yes, sir, you are all good. But when I am asking, you know, no of you uh, responding. What happens? What happens? So, in Zoom, this is the thing. Okay. So span A, B, and C, D. I asked about fixed moments. Span A, B, and C, D. So A, B, there is no load. Similarly, C, D, there is no load. Therefore, fixed and moment will be zero. 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 Very good. So this is what I expect. Okay, zero is the correct answer. So therefore, no need to find fixed and moment uh, at the spans A, B, and C, D. Okay. Now, so step one is stiffness and relative stiffness. Step two, distribution factors. Step three, fixed and moments. Okay. Now, step four will be we need to start the moment distribution. See whether the screen is visible uh, clear now. Are you yes, able to sir. read things? Uh, yeah. uh, yes, sir. Because this is more important. We are going to see now important thing. There is a moment distribution. You need to uh, see clearly. That's why I am asking. Okay. So step four is moment distribution. So if possible, you can also have uh, the worksheet in your hand so that you can work so that you can gain the uh, gain confidence over the. Okay. Already we know, but just we are uh, reviewing or recalling what we are studying. So. You just start with joint. So, what are the joints we have? We have joint A, joint B, joint C, joint D. Okay, right like this. Okay. Then member. At joint A, we have member AB. At joint B, joint B, we have BA and BC. Okay, joint B, BA and BC. Joint C, CB and CD. Joint C, CB and CD. Joint D. BC. So write the members meeting at the joint. That is the next thing. Then write the relative stiffness. Relative stiffness is one for or yeah, all members in this problem. A, B, B, A, B, C, C, B, C, D, D, C. Okay. Then write the distribution factor. Distribution factor for A, B is zero. B, A, we have found as 0.5. B, C, we have found as 0.5. CB we have found it as 0.5, CD 0.5, and BC 0. Okay. Then write the fixed end moments. Then write the fixed end moments. So fixed end moment in AB is 0, BA is also 0. In BC, we have minus 36 kilometer meter, therefore write minus 36, and C plus 36, and CD 0, and BC also. Zero. So only in member B C C B will have this fixer and moments. So write the fixer and moments. Okay. So immediately after fixer and moment, immediately after fixer and moment, we should write distributed end moment. D E M. F E M is fixer and moment. D 
TEM is distributed end moment. Okay, distributed end moment. So now we should tell them, uh, tell our students how to do this process because this is more important. Distributed end moment is uh, to be done clearly without any mistakes. Okay, so we should tell them for distributed end moment, for distributed end moment, we should consider every joint. Okay, for distributed end moment, we should consider every joint. Okay, so consider joint A. Consider joint A. There is no fixed end moment, therefore no distributed factor. Also, distribution factor is zero, therefore zero. Okay. Now come to joint B. Come to joint B. At joint B, we have zero and minus thirty-six. Zero and minus thirty-six. So the unbalanced moment is minus thirty-six. Unbalanced moment is zero minus thirty-six will be minus thirty-six. So to balance this, we need to apply plus thirty-six. So ask them to ask them to write this within bracket and using pencil. Okay, in between these two. Okay, in between these two, please write the balancing moment. Okay, so the balancing moment for this joint will be plus thirty-six. So ask them to write here using pencil. That is more important because others will get confused finally. So and within bracket also. So this is the balancing moment. Okay, so really how to find the balancing moment at B at joint B. We have zero here, minus thirty-six here. So unbalanced moment is minus thirty-six. Therefore, plus thirty-six need to be applied to make it zero. And after writing this, you please check this thirty-six minus thirty-six. So because sometimes uh, by mistake, by or by carelessness, you'll be writing minus thirty-six here, and then add these two. So that in that case, you'll be getting minus seventy-two and not zero. So we should tell them how to check at every stage okay, for mistakes if uh, we are making. Okay, because it is common to make mistakes in uh, problems like this. Okay, so minus thirty six, right? Plus thirty six. Then here at joint C, at joint C, can you tell me what is the unbalanced moment and what should be the balancing moment? Balancing moment is minus thirty six, sir. Very good. What is the unbalanced moment? Thirty six. Okay, thirty six yes, kilometer meters unbalanced. So it unbalanced. need to be balanced by applying minus thirty six. So that should be written within bracket using pencil here in between these two. And come to joint D. Joint D, we don't have any moment. That was zero. Okay. So this is the uh, first iteration. First, I've written first. So first iteration comprises FEM and DEM. Actually, normally I used to tell them don't uh, mark line uh, between FEM and DEM. So this should be a pair. So they have done uh, wrongly here. So this should they please delete this line. Okay. FEM DEM should go together. Okay. So no line in between these two. Okay. So FEM DEM uh, comprises. Iteration one. We we very well know that moment distribution method is an iterative procedure. Okay, it's an iterative procedure. It's a developed or refined method of slope reflection method. Here we do by iterations. Uh, first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, or fourth even fourth iteration to make it to refine the values. So in slope reflection method, uh, we'll be having a uh, number of equations, simultaneous equations. So if we have uh, any number of uh, unknown rotations. That many number of simultaneous equations will be there. So if you solve the simultaneous equations, you'll be getting the unknown rotations. Okay. So here the same procedure is done, but we do or uh, we solve the simultaneous equations in an iterative manner. That's the advantage of moment distribution method over the slope reflection method. We need not solve the equations. Instead, we do by we go by iterative procedure. So first iteration is over. So first iteration comprises FEM and DEM. FEM and DEM. Next, next is COM. COM means carry over moment. So, distribute for distributed moment, we need to consider every joint. For carry over moment, we need to consider every every member. That should be we should make them clearly. Here we are dealing with joints. For carry over moment, we should deal with numbers. For example, I am dealing with AB means. A uh, carryover moment will be done between A B and B A only, because here also people will make mistakes. They will carry over from B A to B C, B C to B A. That should never be done. So for that, you should tell them carryover moment should be done within numbers, within numbers. Distribute any moment joint. You can tell them B M means starts with D. Okay, distribute joint. So joint will be distributed to the from the joints. Carryover moment with number. So number should be the carryover moment should be done within the number. So A B B A B A 
AB likewise uh, uh, carry over. Similarly, here BC, CB, CB, BC, CD, DC, DC, CD. So from CD to DC, DC to CD, carry over will be done within the number and not to the other numbers. That should be clear. Okay. So here uh, AB, BA. So here we have zero. So half the moment will be carried over here. So zero. So AB to BA. Similarly, BA to AB. At BA, we have 18. Half of this moment will be 9. Therefore, this carryover arrow also put using pencil or using pencil. Any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So now come here. Come here. Uh, BC, BC and CB. So at BC, we have 18. So half of the amount will be carried over here. And CB, we have minus 18. So minus 9 will be carried over. So put this arrow mark like this. So if you put arrow mark, then we will not uh, carry over in between these two. Okay? We will not carry over from BC to BA, BA to BC. That because students will make mistakes. So we should know where students will uh, find mistakes and where they will find difficulty. So if you should make them clearly, that carry over should be done within the numbers. And after doing carry over, please check whether uh, carried over between numbers only. So BA to AB, AB to BA. Similarly, BC to CB, CB to BC. Here CD to DC, DC to CD. It should not be done in the other way. Okay, so carry over moment. So for first iteration, the pair is FEM DEM. For second iteration, the pair is COM DEM. Carry over moment and distributed moment. Whenever you carry over some moment, that should be distributed to the between the joints. So DEM. Sir, excuse me, sir. Yes. Sorry for this second, sir. Mm. Tell me. This carry over moment is uh, always fifty percent, sir, or based on uh, distribution factors. No, carry over moment does not depend on the distribution factor. Carry over moment is always half the moment. Yeah. So, so uh, initially, okay. uh, well, initially while teaching them, we will teach this concept. Okay, how distribution is taken care, how carried over. That is, if you apply a moment at one end, okay, if you apply a moment at one end of a member, half the moment will be carried over to the far end. Okay, half the moment will be carried over to the far end. Therefore, carryover factor is the ratio of the moment carried over to the moment applied. That is the definition for carryover factor. Okay. Similarly, distribution factor. Say we will take a joint. So in a joint, uh, many members will be meeting. Okay, many members will be meeting. So if I apply a moment at that joint, that moment will be distributed to the members meeting at the joint. Okay, and it will not be equally distributed. It will be distributed based on the stiffness of that member. That's why we calculate distribution factor, which is dependent on stiffness values. Okay, so in that way, we should teach them. So how distributed end moment is taken care, how carried over moment. So carry over moment is always half the moment. And carry over should be done in a, within the member itself and should not be done to the other members. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Oh. So you can any you can raise any doubt in between. Don't hesitate to ask it. So I will never mind it. If you even keep on often disturbing me, I like you very much. So because we should not uh, uh, do without understanding. Your proceeding is not required. Even if you solve two problems uh, with the clear understanding, that will uh, be very happy. Okay? That will make me happy. Okay? So 18 divided by 2, 9, 0, 0. Here minus 18, minus 9. 89 here minus 18 minus 9 will be here 0. So this is COM. So we have started second iteration. Okay, first iteration, these two combination FEM DM. Second iteration, COM DM. That's why this horizontal line is also not required. Okay, you can also you can delete this line. This line is not required. Okay. Because these two should go together. These two should go together like this. So COM. So carried over a moment, 90 minus 9, 90 minus 9. So next is Distributed end moment. So for distributed end moment, we should consider every joint. So consider joint A. Consider joint A. The moment available is 9. Okay, the moment available is 9. So we need to balance with minus 9. We need to balance with minus 9 and multiply with the corresponding distribution factor. Okay, we need to balance this carryover moment 9 with minus 9. Uh, okay, unbalanced moment of 9 is minus 9. Multiply by appropriate a distribution factor. Therefore, it will be 0. Now come to giant P. Come to giant P. At giant B, okay, at giant P, we have zero and minus nine. We have zero and minus nine. Therefore, unbalanced moment is minus nine. It need to be balanced by plus nine. 
So this plus 9 multiplied by corresponding distribution factor. So 9 into 0.5 will be 4.5. Similarly, this 9 into 0.5 will be 4.5. So here also students will get uh, say they will mindset. They will get a mindset that always will be getting half the value here. So that should also be made clear. It is not easy. Since we have distribution factor 0.5 here, we are getting same values. Sometimes you may have a distribution factor here as 0.6, you may be having 0.4 or 0 0.57, 0 0.43, 0 0.36, 0 0.64. Likewise, if we have a distribution factor. So depending upon the distribution factor, this balancing moment needs to be multiplied by appropriate or corresponding distribution factor. Okay. So 9 multiplied by 0.5 is 4.5. This 9 multiplied by 0.5 is 4.5. Now come to joint C. Okay, come to joint C. So at joint C, what is unbalanced moment? Can anyone tell me? Unbalanced moment is 9, sir. Balancing moment is minus 9, sir. Very good. Very good. So we have 9 plus 0 is an unbalanced moment. So it needs to be balanced by minus 9, right within bracket using pencil. Multiply this minus 9 by the corresponding distribution factor. So minus 9 into 0.5 will be minus 4.5. Minus 9 into 0.5 will be minus 4.5. Okay. Now come to joint D. At joint D, unbalanced moment is minus 9. So balancing moment should be plus 9 multiplied by the factor 0. So these two, these two comprise this second iteration. So that there is no need to draw a line in between, in between COM and DEM. Similarly, there is no, no need to draw a line between FEM and DEM. So we should, somewhere we should uh, write the expansion of these things. DEF, distribution factor, FEM, fixer and moment, DEM, distributed and moment. So when you write distributed and moment, within bracket, please write joint. That means for distributed and moment, we need to consider only joint. Then COM, carryover moment, within bracket, write numbers need to be considered. So if we write like this, then we will not commit any, or the students will not commit any mistake at all. Okay? So COM will be carry over moment. So second iteration is over. So third iteration, okay, third iteration. Again, COM, DEM combination. Okay, third iteration, COM, DEM combination. So COM, carried over moment. So carried over moment should be done with it, members. So at AB we have zero. So half will be carried over here. So we can uh, transfer this uh, uh, arrow sign here so that we can use here. So if you have put once, uh, that will be that can be put for every iterations. So here narrow, here narrow. So 0, 0, 4.5 divided by 2, 2.25. Here, please uh, copy this arrow and uh, place, paste it here. So 4.5, half of 4.5 is 2.25, minus 4.5, minus 2.25. Similarly, transfer this uh, arrow sign here. So this arrow, minus 4.5 by 2, minus 2.25. This arrow, 0 by 2, 0. Okay. So we will be getting COM. Okay, COM. Next is DEM, distributed moment. Consider every joint. At joint A, we have 2.25. Suffer to balance this, we need to apply minus 2.25 and I need to be multiplied by, multiplied by this use factor of 0. At here, at B, can you tell me the unbalanced moment and balanced moment? Balanced moment 2.25. Very good. Therefore, what will be the distributed moment? How to find the distribution number? 2.25 multiplied by? 0.5. Distribution factor, sir. Distribution factor for BA. Similarly, distribution factor for BC. Very good. So if you multiply, I will be getting 1.125 here. Then, here, what is unbalanced moment? Unbalanced moment 2.25, sir. Balancing moment minus 2.25. Very good. Okay. So immediately after writing this balancing moment, what I I told how to check? Just add these two. Okay, just add these two. You should get, get zero. zero value, sir. Ah, yes. Because uh, by mistake, uh, students will uh, write this as plus 2.5 itself. Okay. If you write plus 2.5, then if you add, I will be getting 4.5. So the thing is, I should make it zero. Everywhere, please see. So here, 2.5 minus 2.5 is zero. Okay. Here, 36 minus 36 is zero. Minus 36 plus 36 is zero. So everywhere, you should check. And other check is, other check is, we can add these four values. After, after completing DO and DM, after completing CO and DM, you can add these four values. If you add these four values, I should get zero. This 
minus 1.125 minus 1.25 this zero so that i will get zero so if I, if even if i have committed mistake i can uh, find it out that is, that is called debugging the error okay how to debug the error yeah, i will check it at every stage by adding all these four values okay by mistake if you have put this as plus 2.25 then this also will be getting plus 1.125 this also will be getting plus 1.125 so if i add i will not get zero okay so this check also we should teach our students how to check every stage by stage okay this is our first check we add these two this itself will satisfy however not to ensure our process or calculations are correct that is uh, they have properly applied this distribution factor and all these things should also be zero when i add these four values okay that's it now this completes third iteration this complete COM and DEM information. So there is no horizontal line required between COM and DEM. Okay. Then fourth iteration starts with COM. Fourth iteration starts with COM. So COM within member. So A, B, and B, A. Please uh, put the arrow here. So 0, 0, 1.25 divided to 0.5625. Then here B, C, C, B, and C, D, D, C. So 1.25 half of this value, this half value. Half of this value, half of this value. Okay, once you have carryover moment, always we should not end up with carryover moment. We should always end up with distributed moment only. Okay, with the carryover, you should not uh, finish the process. So, COM and DEM, they go together. Okay, so they go, they will go together. So, DEM. DEM means every joint. So, a joint here 0.5665 minus 0.5625 need to be applied into 0 for 0. Here, 0 minus 0.5625, so plus 0.5625 need to be applied, multiply the appropriate distribution factor, therefore this. Then here, 0.5625, so balance amount will be minus 0.5625, multiply the appropriate distribution factor, you will be getting this. Then, this is minus 0.5625, so plus 0.5625 need to be applied, multiply the appropriate distribution factor, 0. Okay. So, now, we can go for final end moments. Okay. Don't write as FEM. Because this will get confused with fixed end moment. So we need to write here as final end moments. Final end moments. So final end moments, how to get final end moments means we say they have put a tick mark here. So from this tick mark, that is from FEM, we need to add all the values vertically. To add all the values vertically, you'll be getting the final end moment. Okay. Now add all these values here. All the all add all the values from this tick mark. Okay. So add all the values vertically. So cash should be taken. We should not add the values written in the bracket. That's why we write these values using pencil. Okay. So cash should be taken. We add only these values written in pen. Okay, not in pen. That's why we ask the students to make differentiation. If they write in pen, pen here, then uh, by mistake, by inadvertently, they will do adding all the values. Okay, even 2.5. So that will not. So finally, how to check whether we have done the moment distribution correctly. How to check whether the moment distribution done correctly. That is, at the fixed end, at fixed end, we'll be definitely having some moment, we'll be having definite moment. And at continuous joints, say at joint B and joint C, there should be balance of moments. If I get 28.906 here, I should definitely or necessarily get minus 28.906 here. Similarly, here if I get 23.901, here I should get minus 23.901. Okay, here. I should get a moment. So this will have another check, or we can check whether we have done the moment distribution process correctly. Okay, so moment distribution process when it is done correctly, then only we'll be getting this balance of moment at the time. Do you have any doubt in this moment distribution table? Have anyone no. done? Have anyone done by parallelly by yourself? Yes, sir. Very good. So, because that will improve our confidence on the method. Okay? Only when you do, because problematic subjects, we should tell our students this also. Don't, in case of problematic subjects, uh, simply don't go by simply observing. So, you do by yourself, because then only they will get the time limit. Okay? They can do the time within the given time, they will be able to do simply by seeing the steps. Uh, one can't uh, write in the examination or one can't administer time in the examination. Okay. Okay. Now, after final end moments, we should tell them how to draw the 
bending moment diagram. That is more important. Okay? How to draw the bending moment diagram. So, from the moment distribution table, okay, from the moment distribution table, we'll be getting the final end moments. We'll be getting the final end moments. So, mark the final end moments in the portal frame. Okay, mark the final end moments in the portal frame like this. Say here, first draw the portal frame. First draw the portal frame. Here I have 12 kilonewton meter. Here 24 kilonewton meter. Here minus 24 kilonewton meter. 24 kilonewton meter minus 24 kilonewton meter and zero. Okay, so mark the end moments. Mark the end moments. Okay. So here also we can check at any any joint the moment balances that similar joint see there is moment balance. Here we have some moment. Okay. Now we'll we'll see how to draw the bending moment diagram. How to draw the bending moment diagram. So, here at A, we have a uh, plus 12 kilonewton meter. Okay, plus 12 kilonewton meter. That means clockwise moment. A yeah, clockwise moment need to be applied at A. So, uh, using pencil, using pencil, you mark a clockwise moment. You apply a clockwise moment here. Okay, you, you start from this point, try a, uh, apply a clockwise moment like this, and see whether the column will be pushed inside or outside. Okay, you ask them to apply a clockwise moment. So if I apply a clockwise moment here, if I start from this point and if I apply a clockwise moment here, that moment will make this column either to go inside or outside. Please tell me. I am applying a clockwise moment of 12 kilonewton here. I am starting. Inside, uh, inside, inside. Okay, inside. That's why we mark the ordinate inside. That way we mark the ordinate inside. Okay. Now here at the top we have at BA. For BA we have plus 24 kilonewton meter. Therefore, I'm applying another clockwise moment here. I'm applying clockwise moment here. So that will make the column to move outside or inside. Please tell me. I start from this point. I apply a clockwise moment here. I apply a clockwise moment like here. Outside. So, uh, outside. That's why I mark this 24 outside. Okay. Then join these two. This 12 kilometer meter and 24 need be joined. So for bending on diagram, for column is completed. Okay. For this column, column AB is completed. Now we'll go to beam BC, beam BC. Okay, so for beam BC, we have MBC as minus 24. Okay. MBC as minus 24. That's why the anti-clockwise moment is applied here. So you can see this. They have drawn in pencil. So this anti-clockwise moment will make the member BC okay, will move up or down. Can you tell me this anti-clockwise moment applied at uh, BC, uh, whether this beam will be moved up or down? Due to this moment, tell me upward, upward. That's why I have marked upward. Okay, about this. Okay, so this is 24. So this is also 24. So same in uh, at the magnitude. This 24 is marked here. So I get this point. Then come here, come here. Here I have plus 24 kilometer. So apply a clockwise moment and see whether the beam will be pushed up or down. So apply a clockwise moment, the beam will be pushed up. Therefore, this point will be fixed. So connect these two points. Connect these two points. I'll get a rectangle. I'll get a rectangle like this. Okay. So in the beam, in the beam, there is an applied load of uh, 12 kilometer per meter. So that will cause a free bending moment diagram of a parabolic free BMD WL squared by 8. Therefore, draw the free BMD here. Draw the free BMD here. Okay. So now this line will become the baseline. In case of beam, the end moment diagram line will become the baseline. Above the baseline, positive bending moment, and below the baseline, we have negative bending moment. Yeah, above positive bending moment, and below, we have negative bending moment. Okay. Now come to this column. Come to column CD. So at C, we have minus 24 kilometer meter at uh, MCD, and MDC is minus 12 kilometer meter. So at uh, CD, apply an anti clockwise moment here. Apply an anti clockwise moment and see whether the column will be pushed out or inside. Can you tell me? If you apply an anti outside, uh, outside. therefore mark this 24 outside. Then come to base D. Here we have an anti clockwise moment, so apply an anti clockwise moment like this. So this will push the number inside. So this is how we should complete the 
bending moment diagram. We should teach our students how to complete the bending moment diagram. And in the bending moment diagram, in the bending moment diagram, uh, say in the beam, especially in the beam, we will have negative bending moment at the supports, okay, negative bending moment at the supports, and positive bending moment near the mid span or at the mid span. In some cases, if the loading is UDF, will be get at the mid span. The loading central point load will get maximum possible at the mid span. But if the loading is non-central point load, then under the point load, we'll be getting the maximum value. Okay, under the wherever the load is that, we'll be getting the uh, maximum positive bending moment. And in case if you have different values, say here I have 24, I have 24 here. That's why I, I will be getting at the exactly at the center. If the loading is unsymmetrical, then I will not get this value will be something and this value will be something. In that case, that case as you have seen in the, as you have seen in the uh, case of continuous beams, in order to find maximum positive bending moment, we need to consider we need to consider shear force at any given section. Yes, shear force at any given section equal to zero, and see where uh, shear force is zero. At that point, when you will be maximum. Okay, at that point, when you will be maximum. Okay, so that that's how we should say. So here, to find this ordinate O1, I have marked this as O1. The simple way to find this O1 is the total ordinate. The total ordinate will be W L squared by eight. So I will be able to calculate total ordinate W L squared by eight. So W L squared by eight minus this ordinate, okay, minus this ordinate will give me this. Therefore, this O1, that is maximum positive unit in span B C will be W L squared by 8 minus 24. And W is 12, L is 6. So 12 into 6 squared by 8. Therefore, how much will be getting? Can anyone calculate? 12 into 6 squared by 8. W L squared by 8 will be 54. Minus 24 will be 30. So that is the maximum positive value in fact, BC. And we should also tell them, should also tell them why we are calculating this uh, positive bending moment, negative bending moment, and all. Okay, in case of beams. Okay. So, in order to design the mid span reinforcement, in order to design the mid span reinforcement, this positive bending moment will be useful. In order to design the uh, support reinforcement, we need to use the actual negative bending moment. Yes, tell me. Do you have any doubt in this? No, no. Okay. Now, take down this problem. Okay. This problem will be a practice session for you. Please do it. So that this practice will help us in the next session i'll be doing uh, a portal frame with side sway so there you will be very easy to follow it that's why i asked you to do this please note down this problem and i'll also support you during the calculations we have a portal frame of this type loading is 10 kilometer two meters here it is three meters 3 meters, 3 meters. Moment of finish of this portion is 2i. This portion is i. This is i. Madam, Dr. Madam. Now, whether I can ask them to practice this or I should teach completely. And let them uh, do it, sir. Let them do it, sir. Oh, okay. So, step one is stiffness and relative stiffness. So, all of you, please do it. So then only you will gain confidence over the method. Okay. So, just recalling only. We have already studied all these methods. Okay. Nothing is new. We just we are recalling so that we can teach in an effective manner to our students. So, only when we practice well, we can. Uh, teach the same concept to our students. So actually, in the in my class, what I will be doing in online class will be, uh, so everyone will be doing this. I'll ask students to uh, type the answers for each step. 
Okay, so then we'll be typing the distribution factor for A, B, B, A, B, C, uh, C, D, and L. So that others, those who are working, will uh, can check the values. So step one will be stiffness and relative stiffness. Just I'll display so that those who want it can refer here. Span, which we'll always start with span, A, B. B, C, B, D. Okay. A, B, B, C, B, D. Length. A, B is 5 meters. B, C is 3 meters. B, D is 3 meters. Moment of inertia. 2, I, I, I. Then stiffness. Stiffness, one small change I'll tell you. Please see. A small change, not change. The, the new thing in this problem is stiffness of A, B. The stiffness of A B will be simply ratio of moment of inertia to span because A is fixed, B is continuous. While for B C, whereas for B C, B is continuous, where C is hinged. In, in case if you have hinged or roller support, then stiffness will be 3 4 I by A. Stiffness will be 3 4 I by A. Therefore, I have used 3 by 4 into I by A. For B D, for B D, it will be simply I by L because D is fixed and B is continuous. Therefore, I by L. So, I by L for AB, 3 fourth I by L. The stiffness will be 75 percent. When you have any one of the supports as freely supported or hinged or on rollers. Therefore, this is 2 I by 5. This is 3 4, 3 by 4 into I by 3. This is i by 3. And I have chosen a common multiplier of 12 by i. And it is optional. You can choose your own uh, common multiplier to get to make this as a mere number. I have multiplied by 12 by i. That's why I'm getting getting this. So, have you uh, anyone calculated distribution factors? So, since I multiply by 12 by i, I get 4.8. Three, four. Even you can, it says why I have chosen 12 means here I have got 12, here I have 5, 3. Even you can multiply by 5 by i, or you can multiply by 3 by i, or you can multiply by 4 by i, or 12 by i. Okay. The relative stiffness is calculating this relative stiffness optional. The user will have his own common multiplier. And whatever maybe you multiply, you will be getting the same result for distribution factors. So step two will be distribution factors. D of AB is zero since A is fixed. A D of AB is zero since A is fixed. D of BA. D of BA is KBA by KBA plus KBC plus KBD. So here you can see how many members are meeting in time P. Okay. I want to calculate distribution factor for BA. So stiffness of the member by sum of stiffnesses of members meeting at the joint. A joint B. I have BA, I have BC, I have BD. Therefore, KBA plus KBC plus KBD will give you distribution factor for BA. So, relative stiffness you may have in the value. So, 4.8 divided by 4.8 plus 3 plus 4. So, you should get distribution factor as 0 0.41. 0 0.41. Then DFBC and DFBD calculate. Then go to DFCB. Okay. DFBC. DFBC will be KBC by 
ABC, ABA plus KBC plus KBD will be 0.25. After calculating, calculate DA, DF, BD. Don't uh, do it like this. Because at the joint, it will be calculated all the uh, three distribution factors. Because the sum of distribution factors at any joint, the sum of distribution factors at any joint should be equal to 1. That also we should tell them. If you have any, even a basic doubt, please get it clarified. Are getting 0 0.41, 0 0.25, and 0 0.34. So distribution factor for BA is 0.41. Distribution factor for BC is 0.25, and for BD it is 0.34. If I add these three, 0.41 plus 0.25 will be 0.66 plus 0.34 will be 1. Then distribution factor for CB, distribution factor for CB equal to 1, since C is freely supported. Okay? Distribution factor for fixed uh, joint is 0, whereas for uh, freely supported either uh, hinged or roller, the distribution factor is 1. Okay? The factor C B equal to 1, since C is freely supported. Then distribution factor bar, one more, db. db is 0 since d is fixed. Okay. Then calculate the fixed end moments. So in span AB, we have non-central non -central point load. So minus WAB squared by L squared. And M of BA will be plus WA squared B by L squared. Okay. Minus WAB squared by L squared. And plus WA squared B by L squared. So fixed end moment for AB will be minus 72 kilometer meter for BA will be 4.8 kilometer meter. You just complete up to step three. Okay, step four I will tell you how to do the distribution again. Though you know I will see. Okay, so after completing step three, please inform me. Up to step three, there won't be any uh, difference between what we have studied in the first problem and this. Have you all calculated the fixed end moments? Yeah. 
Please check whether you are getting this. Minus W A B squared by L squared plus W A squared B by L squared for A B and for B C minus W L squared by 12 uh, M of B C and M of C B will be plus W L squared by 12 which will be minus 1.5 kilo newton meter and plus 1.5 kilo newton meter. And in span uh, B D there won't be any moment because there is no load. Sometimes load will also be given in the column also. Do you have any doubt after this? No, sir. Shall we go to a moment distribution? How do you mean? Shilpa. Tanparasan No one is responding. What is nine or there? Sir. Hmm. Yes. Sir, have you completed six and moments? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now we'll see moment distribution. So please see the table, common distribution table, how we are proceeding. So first write joint. First write joint. A, B, C, D. Okay. Joint A, B, C, D. So then number. Number. Number A. At joint A, we have AB. At B, there are three members meeting. Okay. At B, there are three members meeting. Okay. So you write BA here and write BC here so that carryover can be done between AB, BA, similarly BC, CB. Okay. So please listen here how to write, how to teach our students write these numbers. Okay. When, when we have uh, three members meeting at a joint. Okay. So at B we have BA, BC and BD. So write BA near AB and BC near CB so that uh, uh, further uh, carryover will be easier. Okay, carry out between these numbers will be easier, and we should also tell them uh, carry out should be done between BD and DB. BD and DB, therefore, put this arrow here so that you will not forget to carry out the moment from B to D, D to B. You understand why we do this? So, A, AB only remember AB is there at B. We have three members meeting, so at B, write BA here near AB and BC near CB and BD in between. And put this arrow mark like this so that we will not forget to transfer or carry over from B to D and from D to B. So this thing should be written. Next, relative stiffness 4.8, 4.4, 4, etc. Then distribution factor 0, 0 0.41, 0 0.34, 0 0.25, 1, 0, okay, 1, 0. Then the new thing in this moment distribution is we have a freely supported end. Okay, we have a freely supported end or hinged support. Okay, so first write the fixed end moment. First write the fixed end moment. Minus 7.2, 4.8 in BA, BD 0, BC minus 1.5, CB plus 1.5, DB 0. 
So the first thing we need to make a note down is you please see whether you have any uh, free support or hinged support in your problem. Okay, first notice where you, whether you have any free support or uh, hinged support. So if you have hinged support, finally we should get momentous zero. Therefore, what we need to do is here we have we have an additional step called balance. Balance. So where we need to balance, we have uh, at C. It is a freely supported end. So we have 1.5 moment is there. So minus 1.5 need to be applied to balance uh, to make it a zero because finally we should get moment at C as zero. It's a free end. Therefore minus 1.5. The next step is carry over moment. So whenever we apply a moment here, that should be half a moment to be carried to the uh, far end. So CB to BC. So CB to BC. So minus uh, 0.7 will be carried over here. The other joints there won't be any carry over. Okay. So this step need to be done extra when you compare with the previous problem. Okay, fixed run moment in the in the previous problem you straight away started FEM, DEM, COM, DEM, COM, DEM like this. But here we need to balance the moment at the free joint, and then only we need to do the other process. Okay, so FEM yes we did uh, for the first problem. Balance of moment has to be done at the uh, where we have free support or hinged support. So we have one point here. So minus one point we need to be applied. Half the moment should be carried over to the uh, far end. So CB to BC or BC to CB, and other things uh, no change. Then you add these values to get the finalized fixed end moment. So to get the finalized fixed end moment, add this. So minus one point two, I'll get minus one point two. Here's four point eight. Here zero. Here minus one point five minus point seven will be minus two point two five. Here minus two point two five. Here it will be zero, and here it will be zero. So hereafter, I should not touch this end because I made this uh, moment as zero. So I can put an arrow like this. I can put an arrow, or I can close this path. I can close this path, and I know I should not either carry over or distribute for this number. Yeah, we have because we have finalized to fix it a moment here. So from here only our iteration starts. From here only our iteration starts. So once you have finalized fix it a moment, you can go with distributed end moment. Distributed end moment. For distributed end moment, consider every joint. For distributed end moment, consider every joint. So at joint A, I have minus 1.2. So plus 1.2 need to be applied. Multiply by the factor is zero. Then come to joint B. At joint B, I have 4.8 zero minus 2.25. So 4.8 minus 2.25 will be uh, 2.55. Therefore, minus 2.55 need to be applied. Please check what is the value, whether the value is correct or not. 4.8 minus 2.25. Yes, it is 2.55. Okay. So 4.8 plus 0 minus 2.25 is 2.55. So 2.55 is unbalanced. I need to apply minus 2.55. So after writing this minus 2.55 within bracket using pencil, add these three values. 4.8 minus 2.25 minus 2.5. I should get 0. If you have wrongly written as plus 2.5, they say initially the students have made a mistake here. They have written plus 2.5 and finally they were corrected. So if you have made a mistake as plus 2.5, by adding these three, I will not get zero. Therefore, this is more important. Then here, so minus 2.5 is there, need to be applied, multiplied by appropriate distribution factor. So minus 2.5 uh, multiplied by this point, 4 and minus 1.05. Minus 2.5 multiplied by 0.34 will be minus 0.87. Minus 2.5 uh, minus 2 multiplied by 0.25 will be minus 0.637. Okay. Here there is no distribution. Here distribution is zero. Okay. Because we have distribution factor zero. Then carry over moment. Carry over moment. We need to uh, draw this line carefully. So carry it over from here to here half, from here to here half. Similarly, this minus 0.8 some half of this. Uh, Need to be carried over to this end. That's why we get this. So here, that arrow we have initially put in at the top. At the top, we have put the arrow. It need to be carried over from B to D and D to B. So this we should not forget while doing carry over. Okay. So at B we have some value. So half the value need to be carried over to D. That's why we have minus 0.87 half of this value minus 0.435 added minus 0.44. Okay. So this will not be carried over because we have closed this end. From here also there won't be another for zero. So carry over amount is this. Okay, so the carry over amount is half of this, half of this down here, 
and half of this should go here, but we have closed this path, and half of the value should come here. Here, close the path, that was 0. So all the other values are 0. Only here you have minus 0.525, and here minus 0.44. So this is first iteration. First iteration. Okay. This, this is first iteration. Final CPM and DEM. Carry amount is second iteration. Start with second iteration. So uh, COM, DEM is the uh, second iteration. A finalized FEM and DEM is the first iteration. COM and DEM is the second iteration. So in the second iteration, I need to distribute. So consider every joint. Minus 0.525 is there. I need to apply plus 0.525 and multiply by appropriate uh, uh, distribution factor. That was 0. Then come to giant P. At giant P, already everything is 0. Therefore, no need to balance. So 0 will be the distributed moment. And here I have closed the path thread. Here I have minus 0.44 plus 0.44 need to be applied. Multiply by appropriate distribution factor, that was zero. Okay. So this indicates the distributed environment value indicates that that further no iteration is required. Okay. No further iteration is required. Therefore, we can complete with this two. So this indicates convergence. We call this as convergence. Similarly, in the first problem, in the previous problem, how did we get convergence? Say we stop with four cycles or four iterations. How can we decide that? So it can be decided based on the distributed end moment value when the distributed end moment value is very less say if it is 0 0.025 0 0.005 not not by like that if you have distributed end moment value then further carryover and further distribution will make it still lesser value that's why that indicates convergence so at the most we can do four iterations four iterations are enough for any problem here it, it converges at two iterations therefore we stop with this and we need to add from this finalized fixer and moment Okay, we need to add from finalized FEM. So add from this minus 1.20, minus 0.250, and we're getting the final end moment as minus 1.73. Add from here. So please put a tick mark here as we did in the previous problem. Our values from here only should be added, not from the top. Finalized with FEM from finalized FEM only. We need to add the values. So add the values from finalized FEM. We'll be getting minus 1.73 here. 4.8 minus 1.3.7 here, and 0 minus 0 0.8 here, and here minus 2.8 here. Here you may think we are not getting balance of moments. Okay, here you may see we are not getting balance of moments. But if you take the sum of moments, you take sum of moments, you will be getting 0. 3.7 minus 0 0.87 minus 2.8 because three numbers are meeting. If you have only two numbers, then uh, 3.75 minus 3.75 you will be getting. But here we have three numbers. Uh, moment balance will be there by adding all the three end moments. Here, 0 is carried over and 0 here. Here, minus 0.44. Say, if you have not done this carryover to this n, you will be writing this as 0, and that is wrong. Okay, that's why we should, at the beginning itself, we should do the carryover arrow. Whenever you involve three members, you, this need to be done carefully. Okay, this need to be done carefully. How to carry over from this end to that end. <coughs> okay, so the carryover diagram is, will be helpful. Arrow will be helpful. Do you have any doubt in this? The carryover or distribution? No, sir. Have, have anyone done by yourself this? If not, I will supply this uh, PPT and then take from that, okay? And practice by yourself. Okay, sir. So let us see how to draw the bending moment diagram now. Okay. With that, we will complete and then we will continue after a 15 minutes break. Okay. Madam, am I right? We should continue by 1045. Yes, sir. Okay. We will complete the bending moment diagram and then we will go. Okay. So mark the values. Okay. Minus 1.73 kilometer meter, 3.73 kilometer meter at this MBA and MBC. Uh, minus 2.887 kilonewton meter and MBD minus 0.87 kilonewton meter, MDB minus 0.44 kilonewton meter. So mark the values and then go for plotting the values. Okay. Let us see how we have drawn the minimum diagram. Say at A, at A, I have minus 7.73. Therefore, I need to apply an anti-clockwise moment. I need to apply an anti-clockwise moment. So if I apply, apply an anti-clockwise moment, the B, A, B will be pushed up. Therefore, mark this point. Mark this point. Okay. Then come here. Come, come here. Here I have a clockwise moment of 3.7 or so. Okay. Apply a clockwise moment. Therefore, I will be getting up. 
but for connect these two. So you go uh, portion by portion. First complete AB and then BC and then uh, BD. Okay, first AB, the beam AB. We have applied an anti-clockwise moment, therefore the beam will move up, mark this point. Similarly here, I have a clockwise moment of 3.75. Apply here, that will move uh, the beam up, therefore mark this point, connect these two points. And this member portion AB subjected to a point load, therefore this triangle will be the free bending moment diagram. Triangle will be the free bending moment diagram. Then come to portion uh, BC. Here, I have minus 2.89 anti-clockwise moment, so apply here, therefore I will be getting this point. Yeah, I'm getting this point here it is zero so connect these two then it is subjected to udl therefore connect with the help of a parabola okay then shade the portions the end moment diagram becomes a baseline the line connecting the end moments becomes a baseline and above the baseline you have positive bending moment, and below the baseline you have negative bending moment then come to column bd okay at b i have minus 0.44 okay what are the values here? so minus 0.87 so apply this moment therefore it will move they, as they apply an anti clock moment as shown in the diagram. Okay? If they apply it, the column will move toward the right. Here I have another anti clock moment of 0. 0.44. So apply an anti clock moment, the column will move to the left. Then connect these two. So this is how we should complete the bending on diagram. Okay? So you, even if you have any doubt in this, you can write during the next session. So we will continue by 10.45. Thank you all. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Wonderful lecture, sir. Uh, so we have a photo session at the end of each session, sir. Kindly join for the okay. photo session, sir. Now or after second? Yes, sir. Immediately after every session, we used to take photo. Oh. So please, I will. Yes, Partsman, please kindly uh, switch on your video. Sir, uh, you have to stop presenting. So kindly switch on your video, please. Thank you, sir. Okay, no. Thank you, sir.